Imagine you and your colleague are both editing the same document in a shared workspace. You both make changes and save the document. But whose changes will ultimately be saved? This is the essence of the problem with concurrent updates. If not handled carefully, one person's work can accidentally override the others. One way to solve this is with pessimistic locking. It's like saying, I'm going to lock this document while I edit it, so no one else can touch it. This guarantees that only one person can make changes at a time. But it can cause delays if others are waiting for their turn. So optimistic locking takes a different approach, based on trust. It assumes that conflicts, such as two people trying to change the same thing at the same time, are rare. And here is how it works. Each time you save the record, like a document or a database row, a version number is associated with it. This could be a simple counter or a timestamp. So when you want to save your changes, the system checks if the version number you have matches the current version in the database. If the versions match, it means no one else has changed the record since you last retrieved it. Your changes are saved and the version number is incremented. And if the versions don't match, it means someone else has already updated the record. And this is where you have to decide how to handle the conflict. You could refresh the updated record, merge your changes with a newer version and try saving it again. Or you could inform the user that their changes are out of date and let them decide what to do. In some cases, you might just decide to override the other changes, usually which is not the best idea. Optimistic locking generally performs better than pessimistic locking in situations where conflicts are infrequent because it avoids unnecessary waiting and locking for users. Here is a simple sequence diagram illustrating the optimistic locking conflict scenario with person Alice and Bob. Here, both Alice and Bob read the same product from the database. They receive the same quantity, in this case 10, and version number 1. Bob then updates the quantity to 8. The database successfully updates the record and increments the version number to 2. Alice then attempts to update the quantity to 9 using the outdated version number 1. The database compares Alice's version 1 with the current version 2 and detects there is a conflict. The database then throws a optimistic lock exception back to Alice, indicating that her update is based on stale data. This sequence diagram visually demonstrates how optimistic locking can detect and prevent conflicts when multiple users or processes try to modify the same data concurrently. Let's take a look of optimistic logging using Java JPA with SQL. JPA or Java Persistence API is a standard Java technology that simplifies how your Java application interacts with the database. It lets you work with Java objects directly instead of writing complex SQL queries. And it handles the mapping between your objects and the database tables behind the scenes. Now, JPA uses annotations like at entity, at id, at table, and at column to map Java classes to database tables and their fields to columns, making it easier to work with data in your Java applications. Here, the add version annotation on the version field in the product entity is the key to optimistic locking. JPA will automatically manage this field. So, when you load the product entity using em.find, JPA also loads the current value of the version field from the database. You modify the product, for example, you decrease the quantity, and then call em.getTransaction.commit. Behind the scenes, JPA includes the original version value in the SQL update statement. The database compares this value with the current version stored in the row. If the versions match, the update succeeds, and JP increments the version field in both the database and the entity object. If the versions don't match, it means another transaction has already updated the row, and an optimistic lock exception is thrown. Now, when an optimistic lock exception is thrown, you have a few options on how to proceed. You retry and refresh the latest version of the entity from the database. You can manage your changes with the updated data and try saving it again. This is suitable when conflicts are expected to be rare and the cost of retrying is low. You can also present the user with the conflicting data and let them decide how to resolve it. Now this might involve showing a diff of the changes, allowing them to merge manually or choosing which versions to keep. This is ideal when the data is user facing and the user needs to be aware of the conflict and make a decision. You can also simply discard the conflicting changes and save your own. Now this is generally discouraged as it can lead to data loss. 
So use this with extreme caution, perhaps only in very specific scenarios where the overwritten data is less important. Here is the Java JP example, which is not recommended in general. Now, you may also implement your own conflict resolution algorithm based on the specific business rules and requirements of your application. This is useful when the above strategies don't fit your needs at all or you have some complex conflict scenarios. Pessimistic locking is best suited for scenarios where you anticipate frequent conflicts where multiple users or processes are likely to try modifying the same data simultaneously. You are absolutely sure that you need to prevent lost updates or inconsistencies. Even a small chance of data corruption is unacceptable. Pessimistic locks are held for the duration of the transaction. So, they are less ideal for long running processes. Optimistic locking on the other hand is a good fit for scenarios where conflicts are expected to be rare. If many users are frequently editing the same record, pessimistic locking might be a better choice. Optimistic locking also generally allows for more concurrent access. You also need to strategize for merging changes or alerting users when a conflict do occur. So in a microservices architecture with high traffic, the choice between optimistic and pessimistic locking depends heavily on the specific use case and data access patterns. If you have critical sections of code where data consistency is absolutely essential and conflicts are common, pessimistic locking might be necessary. However, distributed pessimistic locking can be challenging to implement and may introduce performance bottlenecks. So if conflicts are relatively rare, optimistic locking can offer better performance and scalability. In fact, it is the default in JPA. You should be prepared to handle conflicts gracefully, potentially with retries or user notifications. And yes, consider using distributed locking mechanism like Redis or Zookeeper to manage optimistic locks across multiple microservices. And that is what we'll be covering in our next topic of discussion in system design series.